Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. We are discussing about uh, the filtration process uh, in a module of that filtration and in the previous lectures we have discussed about that uh, uh, the special type of filtration where that particulate materials can be separated from the slurry. Those type of filtration is called plate and frame filter fresh and also rotary drum filter. In that case we have discussed something about uh, uh, how that particulate materials can be separated, what is the basic mechanism and uh, what is the governing equation and based on that governing equation how we can assess that you know filtration process, what are the basic components of those uh, filtration process like there are uh, some you know uh, factors like you know uh, cake deposition even specific cake resistance, even filter medium resistance, those will be actually affecting the uh, filtration efficiency there. Also uh, we have discussed that rotary dump filter, uh, there are also uh, that uh, some components like you know that rotational speed, uh, even filter medium resistance, cake resistance, uh, uh, also the submerged area of that uh, you know filter. Uh, uh, which will affect that you know efficiency of the filtration process. There you have calculated how to you know uh, there you have discussed uh, how to estimate that filter medium resistance as well as spe specific cake resistance from the experimental data just by taking that volume of filtrate with respect to time. Also there it is discussed that what are the you know uh, basic modes of that operation uh, either it will be constant. Uh, uh, rate filtration or constant pressure filtration or not. So there uh, uh, we have discussed both the modes there. Today's lecture will be uh, including also that uh, uh, regarding that filtration but it will be uh, different mechanism it is called that you know reverse osmosis uh, uh, process. Here also the filtration process will be governed by the you know driving force of pressure and in this case uh, some terms should be there that uh, will be discussed and also what will be the mechanism and uh, for how to assess this you know reverse osmosis process where it can be applied and also what is the basic mass transfer equation for assessing this reverse osmosis it will be discussed here. So before going to that reverse osmosis you have to know what is osmosis. So what is osmosis basically it is the movement of you know solvent. Uh, across a semi permeable uh, membrane towards a higher concentration of solute. Suppose there is a uh, solute here in this picture it is shown that if suppose there is a solution of uh, having some solute and there will be a certain concentration of that you know uh, solute here in this solution whereas in the opposite, opposite side of a membrane which is placed here between these two uh, you know solution. Here other side of this membrane there will be no solute, so here pure solvent you can say. So you will see that uh, there will be a movement of solvent across the semi permeable uh, membrane towards a higher concentration of the solute. So where that concentration here you will see that the concentration of that solute will be higher relative to the concentration of the solute here. If here there is no solute then it will be concentration 0 whereas there will be certain amount of solute in the solution. So we can say that uh, this will be higher you know uh, concentrated solution and here this is the you know pure solvent there will be no solute. So there will be a movement of this you know solvent from this you know lower concentration to the higher concentration uh, solution okay. So this actually mechanism of movement or this uh, transport of this uh, the solvent from its lower concentration to the higher concentration will be regarded as that osmosis. Okay. In biological systems you will see that solvent is typically water but uh, osmosis can occur in other liquids like you know supercritical liquids and even gases also there you can say that means gases uh, will be moving from lower concentration to the higher concentration. So this is called osmosis, this is the basic uh, you know concept of this osmosis, osmotic pressure by which that solvent will be moving from the lower concentration to the higher concentration. So here the osmotic pressure is the driving force, okay. So this is called osmosis. 
whereas you will see that reverse osmosis is what they are the direction of the movement of that solvent will be opposite because of that applying some pressure externally. So, that will be a reverse osmosis. So, that will come later. So, let us discuss about uh, this uh, osmosis again here. So, osmosis will occur when there is a concentration gradient of solute within a solution, but if the membrane does not allow diffusion of the solute, the solvent moves to the higher concentration till the solution reaches equilibrium. So, here the solvent will move up to when? the solvent will be moving till this you know uh, concentration of this higher concentration that uh, till the solution reaches its equilibrium. That means in the both the cases you will see that uh, there will be equilibrium condition. Okay. So, in this case uh, you know that uh, there will be a concentration gradient of a solute within a solution, but if the membrane does not allow diffusion of that solute the solvent moves to the higher concentration till the solution reaches its equilibrium. Now, the minimum pressure which needs to be applied to a solution to prevent the inward flow of its pure solvent across this semi permeable membrane is called that osmotic pressure. So, by osmotic pressure this pure solvent will be moving to that higher concentration. So, it is denoted by phi. So, phi is called osmotic pressure. In earlier lecture, we have also shown that there will be a net pressure based on which that filtration happens. That net pressure is the total pressure minus that osmotic pressure. But when we are talking or we are actually doing the operation with the pure solvent, in that case, this osmotic pressure will be very negligible compared to the total pressure. So, in that case, phi is considered as a negligible amount. So, there it is neglected. But here osmosis, uh, in that case it is the natural process you can say uh, that solvent will be passing from this uh, lower concentration to the higher concentration by this uh, pressure. This is called osmotic pressure. Okay? And then uh, reverse osmosis coming. Now, in this case you will see that in this uh, figure the higher concentrated solute will be that tend to be applied to this you know high pressure because of this high pressure you will see that uh, the solute particles will not be you know passed through that membrane whereas the liquid or solvent will be passed through that membrane because of that high applied pressure. Okay. So, in this case movement of that solvent will be in the reverse direction. In this case the solvent from the higher concentration to the lower concentration will, will be moving. So, it will be basically under a pressure which will be greater than that osmotic pressure. Okay. So, the RO process involves, RO means reverse osmosis, this is the short form. So, RO process involves the forced passage of water or solvent through a membrane against the natural osmotic pressure to separate water and some solute, solute may be ions or other things. In these high pressures greater than that osmotic pressure, the water molecules can pass through the membranes and the salt are left behind as a briny concentrate. So, that means here you will see that in this amination process you will see that, that uh, from this higher concentrated uh, uh, solution of that solute the solvent will be passing through that membrane whereas solute remains or it will be separated by this you know that membrane there. That means, solute will not be passing through that membrane. So, this technique is mostly used for desalination of water, especially you will see that uh, when uh, we are uh, actually uh, making drinking water from the sea water. So, in that case uh, uh, this uh, reverse osmosis is very important and uh, in large scale industrial uh, operation it is being done that reverse osmosis whereas in our you know domestic use also there are some systems that is called reverse osmosis systems also available and uh, there are also some solid particles to be separated by this you know reverse osmosis uh, mechanism. So, uh, in that case there will be certain membrane who those membrane uh, uh, through which that uh, solute will be you know retained under this high pressure just by allowing the 
you know clean water there so if delta p that means applied pressure is less than delta uh, delta phi that means uh, uh, osmotic pressure then water flows from the dilute to the concentrated salt solution side by uh, normal osmosis okay and if delta p is equal to delta phi that will there will be no occurs there will be no flow occurs that means equilibrium condition would be there if delta p is greater than delta phi then water flows from the concentrated uh, solution to the dilute salt solution side of the membrane okay here in this picture also it is shown that uh, under this osmotic pressure this solvent is uh, uh, flowing from this you know lower concentration to the higher concentration where in the reverse osmosis the solution solvent will be flowing from the higher concentrated solution to the uh, you know lower concentrated solution through the semi permeable membrane then uh, in industrial scale you will see that crest water technology group they are producing drinking water commercially uh, in a large scale that is capacity is very high in that case uh, they are separating different solute by this reverse osmosis technique and they are producing uh, this uh, you know potable water that is uh, desalted drinkable water uh, around you know that uh, uh, 7 lakhs uh, gallon per day from this you know that uh, uh, salting water uh, uh, by this reverse osmosis technique. Now uh, we will assess this reverse osmosis uh, technique uh, which is actually uh, governed by that uh, driving force of pressure drop and how to assess how to assess this you know reverse osmosis uh, separation process there will be a certain uh, you know mass transfer uh, happens mainly in the feed boundary layer and the inside the membrane what is that feed boundary layer and also the whatever mass transfer mass transfer means here solute transfer here from one concentrated solution to the another uh, you know diluted solution so there will be a transport of that solute it is called mass transfer so here some boundary layer of the solid particles near about that membrane you will see that uh, that will affect that you know mass transfer and also you will see that some uh, operational process variables also will affect that you know mass transport of solute from high concentrated solution to the dilute solution through the you know membrane under that pressure and now in that case uh, that mass transfer model to be used to assess that you know reverse osmosis separation process for that you have to uh, know some you know concept of concentration polarization what is that concentration polarization here you will see that some particulate materials or solute you can say here the concentration layer will be different along the distance in the bulk region of that you know solution highly concentrated solution suppose this solution is the concentrated solution and this is the membrane and in this side of this membrane the concentrated solution is there and the other side of the membrane it will be you the dilute solution that means the concentration of that solute will be very low whereas clear liquid you can say that it will be passed through that membrane so in this side where concentration of that solution you will see that particle concentration it will be different at a different location where that feed solution is entering the entry zone you will see that the concentration of the particles or solute will be you know very low compared to the uh, region which is adjacent to that membrane so in that case where that solute concentration will be relatively you know higher at that adjacent layer of that you know uh, adjacent you know uh, side of that you know uh, membrane there the concentration will be higher so this uh, will be regarded as a concentration polarization layer that means solute will be polarized it will be coming uh, to this side of this membrane and uh, when uh, with respect to time it will be coming and depositing 
in this side of this uh, membrane it will be deposited as a layer. So, that is why concentration of the particles will be higher in this side. So, it will be this particular uh, zone it will be you know regarded as or it will be defined as a concentration polarization layer or concentration polarization zone. So, in order to build a mass transfer model you will see that a one dimensional flow to be assumed which is to be valid for the transport of this solvent and solute through the membrane. So, for that you have to know the concentration of that solute in this concentration polarization region. So, whenever you are going to assess that mass transfer of that solute to this membrane you have to know the concentration difference okay, of this solute either in this you know concentration polarization region or in the permeate region in the permeate solution. Now, on the basis of that concentration polarization the mass transfer equation can be written based on the you know mass balance equation by this equation 1 where you will see that JWCP that will be equal to JWC minus D into DC by DX where JW is the solvent you know flux, flux you know that that means rate of volumetric uh, flow of that solvent per unit cross sectional area of the membrane that is called flux. And here Cp, Cp is basically the permeate solution concentration and C is called the solute concentration in the concentration polarization layer. Here Cp as shown in the picture, here what is the Cp concentration? Yeah, Cp is uh, C is the solute concentration in the uh, you know Cp layer here in this region C and uh, D is the diffusion coefficient. So, here in, in this case we can say that the there will be a certain concentration gradient with respect to x in this concentration polarization region and uh, this concentration uh, you know uh, gradient with respect to x in this direction of flow this will give you the diffusion what amount of diffusion will be there rate of diffusion you can say. So, this will be basically minus d dc by dx where d is a diffusion coefficient as per fixed law of diffusion and then what will be the other flow of that you know solute that will depend on that you know solvent flux. So, in that case what will be the solute will be transported by that solvent flux this will be j w into c. Whereas, by diffusion how that solute also to be transported that will be minus d dc by dx. So, what is the effective you know that transport of that solute that will be regarded by this j w c minus d dc by dx. Okay? So, that will be basically what is the j w into C p this is what is that the amount of solute solute which is actually transported through the membrane at that particular solvent flux. Okay? And in this representation of this schematic diagram you will see that there it is written C f, C f is basically the feed solution concentration. C delta 1 is term this is basically the solute concentration at the membrane surface this is C delta 1 and C delta 2 you will see that it is the solute concentration at the membrane surface that is in the permeate side. And another terms you will see that there will be J s, J s is basically the solute flux and delta C p is called the the length of that C p layer or thickness of that C p layer concentration polarization layer. So, we are having that you know mass balance equation that is represented by equation number 1 that is J w C p that will be J w C minus D D C by D x. Now, if you do the integration within a certain boundary condition that means x is ranges from 0 to delta C p and concentration will be ranging from C 1 to C delta 1 
within that you know x ranges. So, based on this boundary condition, we can integrate this equation number 1 and then we can get this equation number 3 as c delta 1 minus cp by cf minus cp that will be equal to exponent of jw delta cp by d is equal to exponent of jw by k. So, this equation number 3 will give after integration of this uh, equation number 1 with that boundary condition and this equation will be called as that you know governing equation for this reverse osmosis filtration process. In this case one term you will get this k, k is basically the mass transfer coefficient in the concentration polarization layer and is defined as k will be equal to d by delta C p. So, d is called diffusion coefficient and delta C p is called that thickness of that boundary layer of that concentration polarization. Now, according to this figure you will see that the solute flux J s is expressed by the following equation this is fine because it is coming from that you know concentration differences. So, it will be basically J s into C p that will be equal to B s into C delta 1 minus C delta 2. Here this is C delta 1 the concentration of this solute in the what is that retented side of the membrane whereas C delta 2 is the concentration of solute in the permeate side of that membrane. So, this concentration difference will give you the expression for the mass transfer of that solute okay, which can be represented by this equation number 5. Also, it can be expressed by the concentration difference of this you know C delta 1 and this you know C p. C p is basically what is that concentration of solute in the permeate solution which will be exactly the same concentration in the near region of that you know membrane at this permeate site. So, we can write this equation number 5 according to this figure based on the concentration difference for this mass transfer equation where B s is called solute transport coefficient. Now, for the reverse osmosis so the total flux of the solvent and solute which represents the volumetric flux on the permeate side of the reverse osmosis membrane and can reflect the concentration capacity of the reverse osmosis membrane which can be expressed by the following equation here equation number 6 here J v J v is basically the you know total flux of the solvent and solute which is basically J w plus J s and since J s is uh, you know very negligible compared to that J w then J v can be you know regarded as J w here itself where J v can be you know defined by this you know volumetric flow rate divided by the you know surface area of that you know membrane through which that you know feed will be uh, flowing or solute will be you know uh, retented or solvent will be transporting. Now, according to that principle of mass conservation we get the following equation here we can write that uh, mass conservation equation what is the total solute that is uh, in feet that will be is equal to what q b into c b plus q p into c p that will be is equal to q b means what that means here uh, the uh, you can say that uh, uh, feed uh, 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 no here it is uh, basically that uh, retented flow rate retented flow rate you can say and c b is the concentration at that you know retented flow that means at the bulk flow you can say and C p is the concentration of solute in the permeation, uh, permeation solution or permeate solution and Q p is the permeate flow rate. So, Q f, Q b and Q p these are actually feed solution flow, retentate flow 
and permeate flow respectively. And CF, CB and CP are the solid concentration respectively. Also the total balance of that solute can be you know regarded as QF that will be equal to QB plus QP. Okay? So, here QF is basically solute and solvent, QB also solute and solvent, QP also solute and solvent in the feed bulks or retentate you can say and also permeate side of that membrane. Okay? And uh, so, this is actually the uh, you know governing equation to you know assess this you know uh, membrane separation process by this reverse osmosis. Now, let us do an example based on this you know uh, theory. Suppose 100 percent pure water is if permeated by a reverse osmosis membrane at a rate of 1000 cc per second what should be the concentration that is per gram per cc at a distance 1 millimeter from the membrane surface. If the concentration gradient of a solute at a distance from the membrane surface follows the relation as C will be equal to 0.1 x square plus 0.2 x plus 0.1 where unit is given in gram per cc per millimeter. The diffusion coefficient of the solute in the solution is given 1000 millimeter square per second. So, here what you have to find out? You have to find out what will be the concentration at a distance 1 millimeter from the membrane surface. You have to find out what is the C value. The governing equation for expressing the mass transfer in a concentration polarization region of the RO membrane which can be written by this equation here JWCP that is equal to JWC minus D DC by DX. For 100 percent pure water in the permeate in that case we can write that CP will be equal to 0 since 100 percent pure water there will be no solute there. So, CP will be equal to 0. So, we can write JWC that will be equal to D into DC by DX from this equation. Okay. which implies that JW is given 1000 C you have to find out D again 1000 into DC by DX it is given as per 0 0.1 uh, what is that after you know in uh, after derivative DC by DX from this equation where concentration with respect to X is uh, uh, given here. So, from this DC by DX that will be coming as 0 0.2 X plus 0 0.2. So, at 1 millimeter that means x is equal to 1 millimeter. So, c will be coming as 0 0.4 gram per cc from this equation. So, I think you understood this problem here how to solve. Then uh, coming to that another uh, important you know uh, point here for this uh, reverse osmosis system how to actually calculate that recovery or permeate production capacity by that reverse osmosis system. In this case if you are considering that recovery as Y which represents the water production capacity that means permeate solution capacity which will be defined as the fraction of heat flow which passes through the membrane. And in this case if we know that permeate flow rate and the feed flow rate then the value of recovery can be calculated by this equation 9. So, y will be equal to q p by q f into 100 in percentage. So, this is called recovery percentage and this recovery percentage will give you the capacity of this RO. Now, the higher the recovery that means the stronger the water production capacity of the RO system and the stronger the concentration capacity of the RO system. Okay. So, I think you understood this one and then another important factor that you have to know it is called membrane rejection. By this also this RO membrane 
separation process be assessed. In this case, the you know rejection uh, is a one term by which you can you know uh, uh, interpret that you know uh, 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 reverse osmosis filtration process. There are two actually uh, rejection. One will be observed, another will be, will be real rejection. The observed rejection is basically based on that you know overall concentration in the feed and permeate side. So, observed membrane rejection fraction can be expressed by this RO, this is defined by this CF minus CP by CF. CF is the overall or average concentration in the feed solution and CP is the average concentration of the solute in the permeate solution divided by C f. So, this what is the difference of that concentration in the feed and permeate divided by the concentration of the feed that will be called as that observed rejection whereas, real rejection actually will be based on the what will be the concentration of that solute in the very near a region of that you know membrane surface in the retinted site and also what will be the solute concentration at the nearer side of that you know permeate side of that membrane. So, based on those concentration it will be you know considered as a real rejection. So, real rejection fraction can be defined by RR. So, it will be C delta 1 minus C delta 2 divided by C delta 1. Here C delta 1 you know that this at this you know concentration polarization region very adjacent to the membrane surface in the retentate side what will be the solid concentration and C delta 2 is the concentration of the solute at the permeate side which is very near to the you know membrane surface at that permeate side. So, based on these you will be able to calculate what will be the real rejection once you know that concentration at that side. So, very difficult to actually calculate that concentration of the solute at that you know you know surface of that you know membrane or at the concentration polarization region. So, for that uh, average concentration is taking uh, by you know calculating it is that you know in the feed solution and also in the bulk solution at that permeate side what would be the concentration it is taking as a average. So, in that case observed rejection is to be followed for you know interpretation of that membrane that will be overall whereas, real to be calculated based on that if you know that concentration at the surface of that membrane. Nowadays very sophisticated instruments are used to you know calculate that you know solute concentration at that nearer to that you know membrane surface and based on which you will be able to assess that you know membrane efficiency based on this rejection of real condition. So, I think you understood that reverse osmosis system what is the difference between osmosis and reverse osmosis, what is the driving force basically the pressure and also you have to assess that you know reverse osmosis based on that you know concentration differences and based on that concentration differences you can assess that you know reverse osmosis based on that one dimensional mass transfer model and for that mass transfer model you are considering what will be the diffusion, what will be the net flux and based on that what will be the mass balance and based on that mass balance you will be able to calculate what will be the you know concentration at a particular you know location from that you know membrane. So, I think you understood this uh, you know lecture here what is the basic concept of RO membrane. In the next lecture onward uh, we will try to uh, discuss the different module which will be started for the discussion of that nanoparticles. So, till now we were discussing about uh, you know uh, that you know micro particles and also that coarser particles conventional particle size and how to separate from that slurry by different techniques also that some you know uh, hydro dynamics frictional pressure drop even some material characteristics all those things. 
Now next module onward it will be there you know some uh, you know introduction to that nanoparticles, nano size particles, what is the basic concept of that nanoparticles, where that nanoparticles are uh, you know used, why those nanoparticles are so important nowadays, what are the different characteristics of that nanoparticles based on who is that uh, nowadays in industry. Uh, look into uh, the process intensification based on this nanoparticle systems for various application to get that you know enhancement of that yield of the reaction even some other separation processes all those things. So, next lecture it will be on that introduction to nanoparticles. So, thank you for giving your uh, kind attention have a nice day.